Uh, we're going to do bronze finish and we're going to use an aluminum A14 patina, yellow dioxide and brown patina stain. Now we're going to uh, clean the metal. The first thing you have to do is make sure your metal is very very clean uh, for the patina to take. This is an acid patina so you want it to uh, bite really well. Uh, and you have to remember that it's going to take longer if you have a very shiny surface because it's harder for the patina to bite. If you have a sandblasted surface or a sanded surface, uh, the patina is going to work much, much faster. Uh, uh, this alumina black or A14 uh, takes anywhere from oh, 15 to 30 minutes to really take well. Uh, and it'll be a little bit splotchy in the beginning. Uh, so usually I'll take a gray Scotch-Brite and start to work the patina into the surface. Again, it's slower if you have a shinier surface than if you have a sanded or sandblasted surface. Uh, so don't expect the patina to work too fast. I also, after I've taken it down with the uh, gray Scotch-Brite, uh, there'll be some surface residue, so I'll take a rag and wipe out wipe off all that excess uh, residue. Next, uh, after we've done the A14, we're ready to put in our yellow dioxide. Uh, usually on those yellow dioxides or any of the dioxides, I heat the metal up. It uh, opens up the pores and lets the patina go in uh, better. And, and on this particular one, you have a very uh, weak binder, so that's on the dioxides, any dioxide, uh, so the heat helps uh, to bond it to the metal. Uh, aluminum uh, gets hot very quickly, so you don't have to really worry too much about um, bonding. Here I'm taking some 4 aught steel wool and shining the surface up uh, a little bit more. I thought I wanted more reflective surface, so I took some 4 aught steel wool and uh, I'm polishing up the surface just a little bit more. Now one of the problems when you use steel wool uh, is that you'll have little pieces of steel and you don't want them to get into your patina uh, surface so you're going to have to clean off the surface after you've done the steel wool. And here I'm blowing it off with an air hose. That's one of the problems of using steel wool. Now we're ready to put on the uh, yellow dioxide. This is a transparent di dioxide. All dioxides are transparent. And they have a dye and a pigment in them, uh, so they're very stable. Um, and they'll pretty much duplicate uh, hot patina, an uh, acid hot patina. Uh, that's one of the reasons I developed them was to do an acid, like an acid patina uh, without using acids. Because you have basically a, instant reaction. Whatever the color is, that is exactly what you're going to get because it is not an acid. And they're also um, non-toxic because of not having any acids in them. Uh, so there's no zero VOCs. The yellow is the most transparent of all the dioxides, uh, so you don't have to worry about diluting them at all. Uh, you can just put this particular one on straight. Some are more opaque, the dioxides, and you want to maybe dilute them with a little bit of water, make them a little more transparent. And you just continue putting it on until you like the, the uh, intensity of the yellow. You don't burn either, so you don't have to worry too much about the heat and burning the dioxide. Uh, next, we're putting on the uh, uh, brown patina stain. And this is a mixture of our new uh, clear coat and, and our solvent dyes. So we're, you're getting two things at one time. You're getting a seal coat on it and you're also getting a color. If you're using the brown patina stain, 
you you should if you're not using it from the spray can we sell it both in a spray can and in uh, little containers such as four ounces eight ounces sixteen ounces i would dilute it at least thirty to fifty percent if you're going to spray it from the can uh, because it's very very strong 